This is Russ Willis, president of Bighorn Botanicals. I'm going to be your photographer and your narrator this morning. And what we're going to do is show you what a U-tip harvest looks like. That's Josh Buckner you're looking at. That's my son-in-law. And he is hand pruning a U. We do the U-tip harvest in the summertime in July and August because that's when the taxanes are at their peak in the very tips of the limbs. And that's what we make all the Montana U-tip products from. Josh has found a really lush you there and he climbed right up in the middle of it as he hand prunes off the 10 to 12 inches of the very tips of the limbs they collect all the u-tips and poly bags and uh, each bag will hold 50 to 60 pounds and then the hard part is packing them out to the road we're about a half mile away from the nearest road here in this vein of view that these guys are harvesting this morning. This particular view's got a little bit of a blue tint to them, to it, and uh, some of them will be deep dark green, but some of them have this bluish tint to them. They're real pretty. They're usually females. We got one more guy with us today, Josh's brother Nick. He's further up the hill from us. He found a real good one up there and he's working his way down this direction. This is a quiet job. All you hear is the uh, sound of the pruners nipping. A lot quieter than logging, listening to a chainsaw and skitter all day long. We're on the last week of the 2015 harvest and this year we will have done somewhere around 6,500 pounds from two different units. This particular U is about 105 years old. In 1910, most of this country burned up. There was a major forest fire went through and killed most of them, but they came back, I guess from their root systems. And uh, if you saw one down, which we don't do anymore, the growth rings are so close together, you just about have to have a magnifying glass to count them. But the average age uh, most of these ewes that we're harvesting nowadays it's about 105 years old. They're slow growing but long lived. They put a carabiner <clears throat> on the sack that they put the tips in and they hook that to their belt. That's how they drag the bags around with them. Then when the bag is full they take a plastic lock tie and they close it shut and then after that they get packed off the mountain if they're uphill of the road then gravity helps out and they can roll them sometimes but uh, it gets brutal when they're having to pack it back up to the road on their backs these guys are in good shape Oh yeah. Here comes Josh. Yeah. A bunch. Josh has got somewhere over a hundred pounds of you on his shoulders. He's a he man. Alright, here they go. This is the tough part. Yeah. Everybody's got about a hundred pounds on the over their shoulder.
These guys really earn their money when it comes to this part of the job. And we pay them really good because they work hard. And they are the foundation of our quality control. They got about a quarter mile more before they hit the road. Right out to the road, loading it up in the back of the truck, and heading toward the processing plant to go get her weighed out. Okay, we're at the processing plant now with this morning's U-tip harvest. <clears throat> And we're getting all the bags weighed out, all the weights recorded, and harvest location, date, and all that gets recorded on a load delivery log. And each bag is tagged with whoever harvested that particular bag. That one weighed 56 pounds. <laughs> okay, once the U-tips are harvested, then processing begins, and what happens there is the first job is we mill it. Cut it up with a knife cutting machine. Each individual bag gets emptied out onto this inspection table here, visually inspected. Then it goes up this conveyor to the milling machine. This is the milling machine, and it has six 26 inch knives in it. And we put a 3 8 inch screen in it for the initial milling. And all the U goes through that machine into the hopper and then gets transferred either into five gallon buckets fresh to make the tincture with but most of it goes into the dryer and this is a dryer load of you uh, this was 2169 pounds it's in here about a foot thick and the way the dryers work is on that end, we open the windows and there's an air intake through the window and then these are, we have two dryers. <coughs> They're propane heaters and the air gets heated and then blows into the plenum underneath of the product bed, which is screen and they're lined with aluminum so it's uh, all cleanable surface and it takes about 48 hours to get it dry down to 8% moisture content or less and if we put 2,000 pounds in the dryer then the way the water is all exhausted is there's big exhaust fans up in the top here. Each exhaust fan is pulling about 9,000 CFM. Each dryer puts out around 6,000 CFM. So over a 48 hour period there will be over a thousand pounds of water going through those exhaust fans. This load is not quite dry yet. It's got about two, three more hours. And uh, then we'll turn it off for the day. Then tomorrow, final milling takes place. And we run it back through the milling machine through a 1 8 inch screen, which cuts it down in size uh, considerably. And that happens tomorrow. Uh, some more of our equipment. This is the powdering machine. 
This is how we, we run the tea through this machine. And that's how we make the powder. It'll do uh, 60 pounds of powder. It takes about 20 minutes to run 60 pounds through it. And this is the encapsulation machine after the powder is made. Some of the powder we sell in bulk to other companies, but we make our own capsules here, around a million and a half capsules every year. This is a uh, capsule gel Ultra 8 2. It'll do 20,000 capsules an hour. And then after you get the capsules made, you run them through this machine and that's the capsule polisher. Gets any dust off of them and cleans them up real good. What we're doing is we're making a batch of used soap and uh, all the ingredients are getting mixed together and blended. And once they get it all mixed up, then they pour it in the pan to where it uh, cures. Okay, they got the soap all mixed up and now they pour it in the pan. Shake it up, baby. <laughs> Push it <down. laughs> No shelving, please. Look at it. Oh, it looks nice, Martha. And that's a pan of you soap. And then they let it cure for several days and it sets up and hardens. And then it gets sliced. It is set up and hardened. And she's going to slice it up today. There it is. That's a big bar of soap. This is a custom made soap cutting machine. And it's made with guitar strings. It's a high E string off a six string guitar. And the strings are actually what cut the soap. This is pretty slick. She takes those sliced sections, <coughs> brings it over to this soap cutter, and they get sliced the other way, which makes a very uniform size. Then all these bars of soap they get put on the curing racks. How long do you leave them on the curing racks, Candace? Three weeks. Okay. A week there, three here. All right. Okay, these, after they've cured for three weeks, then what she does is she takes a carpenter's level <coughs> down there, that's her tool, and she bevels all the edges and cleans them up real nice and then it gets boxed up and it's ready for distribution this room in here which is also the soap room is where the U oil gets made in the crock pots okay this is an outside view of our processing plant it's uh, a little over 10,000 square feet. And this is where all the manufacturing and processing happens. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm up on a ridge above the plant 
give you an aerial view of the processing plant and the valley where we're located. Hope you've enjoyed these glimpses from the land of the wild ewes. This is Russ Willis signing off over and out. Have a nice day.